healthy much, do we? Like, we're always supposed to be worried about something, like bird flu, or swine flu, or scooby flu. <laughs> I don't blame you, that one. But no, um, like, the latest thing that's on at the moment, has everyone seen the uh, banners that go alongside of ads? There's a few students in, so I'm going to guess there's a few bus goers in tonight. You see the banner ads on the side of buses? There's one that's, um, I'm Dr. Singravit Bajra Smith. Have you noticed blood in your poo? <laughs> if you've noticed blood in your poo, looser poo or diarrhea, for three weeks or more, it may be time to talk to a doctor. Okay, one, what medical professional uses the word poo? <laughs> Second, no shit! Or, you know, too much, depending on the symptoms. But, of blood in that. <laughs> I reckon that's alright, that'll keep me for a while. It's still brown, it's fine. No. You know, no, although, having said that, I've spent rather a lot of time on buses over the past three years, and if there was a subsection of humanity that would wait three years, three weeks, three months, I don't know, I've lost my own time scale, if it, that would wait three weeks before going to see a doctor, it would be the people I've seen on buses. <laughs> well, I mean, let's face it, you know, a person's mode of transportation says a lot about the person they want to be, I think. Like, if you drive a sports car, you want to be sporty, you want to be fast. If you drive a, a Jeep, you want to be strong, you want to be reliable. If you, you ride around on the number five, you want to be committed under the Mental Health Act. I shouldn't, I, I, I don't know. I suppose I shouldn't mock because I do rely on that bus a lot. You know, if it wasn't for that bus, I would have to write my own material. <laughs> As opposed to just reciting some of the solid gold turds that I hear coming home on that bus. Including, and not limited to, these are all word for word, actually happened, my favourite things that I've ever heard. I'm not a racist, you raghead. <laughs> if you get done for threatening behaviour one more time, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> And, and this is, it all, will always have a special place in my heart. He was being proper romantic while we was doing it. But then he kicked me out of the car and left me in McDonald's car park. <laughs> it was that one there. Well, I suppose, you know, good on you, really, at that point. You want to have sex in a McDonald's drive through Fine, at least you're not buying food from one. <laughs> I mean, at, at that point, I kind of have to respect that. I really do, because I've never been that confident, that, you know, committed to say, that is what I want to do, I will do that now, I will do that here with God and Ronald McDonald as my witness, you know? <laughs> I've never been that straightforward about things, because I'm just too socially awkward. I mean, I know everyone thinks they're a little bit socially awkward at times. We've all had that situation where you're walking down the street and you see someone you know coming towards you and you go, hi, and they launch into a full-blown conversation and you're like, wow, I was just being polite, but okay then. And you don't want to be rude because you like them, but you don't like them so much that you're prepared to be late to whatever it was you were going to, which is, of course, why you're out of the house is because you're going somewhere. And they're probably going somewhere too, so you don't want to hold them up and you don't really know what you're doing and it's just awkward. We've all had this situation, yes? Yeah? I get that with cats. I, walking down the street, a cat comes along. Oh, who's a cute cat? Stroke the cat, stroke the cat. Oh, it's lovely. The cat goes, meow, because it's a cat. I'm going, oh, you're, you're very lovely, but I can't just sit here all day stroking you because I've got to go somewhere and do things. And the cat goes, meow, because it's a cat. No, I really have to go. And look, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I mean, if, if things were different, if I had more time, but I've... Look, I'm doing my degree and I really need to focus on my work right now and I hope we can be friends and the cat doesn't understand me because it's a fucking cat. Sorry, shouldn't swear. Not that I have anything against offensive language or anything like that. I know some people get really bent out of shape about it but I'm not one of those silly cunts. No, I... 
No, I, I just shouldn't swear because I'm very aware that with my accent, it just sounds wrong. I mean, I sound kind of like what would happen if they did a gritty modern-day reboot of Mary Poppins. <laughs> she drifts down to the east end of London, carrying her magical Sainsbury's bag full of crack. <laughs> Uncle Arthur, you still haven't given me any money. This shit ain't Tuppence bag. <laughs> Don't make me pull out my nine, Uncle Arthur. I know chimney sweeps and all kinds of tr trippy shit like that. Yeah, bust a cap of fragilistic expialidocious, yo. <laughs> just doesn't work, does it, really? I would like to be really erudite and just have these huge words just to pull out of my vocabulary and go, Ah, yes, well, you offend me, sir. Well, then, I wish you an expedient death. I hope you drown in Satan's vomit. You know those people? Those people who, like you insult them, and rather than just telling you to fuck off, they come back with some huge, witty retort of Oliver Wilde proportions, like, ah, well then, on the day of your funeral, I shall be there to pack your ashes into a firework that shall explode and spread across the sky in giant fiery letters. Here lies a corpulent cum stain on the socks of humanity. <laughs> I would love to be like that, but the thing is, in real life, I tend to just go, yeah, well... <laughs> over the phone, I'm different though, because over the phone, people don't know that I'm a five foot nothing bit of bacon fat with unfortunate boobs and bad dress sense. Over the phone, I could be the fucking queen for all name. You know, I, I ring up Virgin Media and go, hello, someone in your employ was supposed to be at my abode at precisely 7.30 this morning to install my new wireless fidelity router. <laughs> Yet, no such person has arrived. <laughs> this will not do! I demand to know exactly... Who am I speaking with? With whom am I speaking? Stephen, Stephen, hello Stephen. This will not do, Stephen. There is a, a vast injustice occurred today. I would like to know exactly what you are going to do. I shall not rest until the highest authority in the land... Oh, we'll install it for free. Oh, next Tuesday, that's very good. I never leave the house, don't worry. <laughs> love to be like that. Uh, I love the back of my arm as well, because it's where I've got all my lines written. Right, yes. Um, <laughs> the other thing about buses... <laughs> shut up, it makes sense. Um, the other thing about buses is the other advert that I was supposed to talk about earlier. Because... Uh, Certain chains of buses like to advertise themselves and they like to make it like they're really friendly. You know, have you seen that picture? They've got a little cartoon bus with its headlights of the eyes and its fenders all bent up in a nice cheery smile and the doors open and it's got a big pink hand coming out of it to show that it's got disability access ramps. And it's supposed to be so friendly and happy and it just misses, just a little bit, just misses and just falls into Camp Creepy. <laughs> Because it, it's, not, it's not so much the picture, it's the slogans that go with it. You know, it's, it's not just a happy bus, it's a bus that's saying, Watch your step. <laughs> we don't want you getting hurt. <laughs> I'm here to look out for you. Hello, <laughs> place. Which, you know, is not the kind of thing you want to see at 10 o'clock at night, say, on your way back from a rapid late night dash to Sainsbury's. I say Sainsbury's, I mean the pub. I say the pub, I mean the off license. I say off license, I mean that hobo with the bags. Oh, no, he doesn't ask questions, it's brilliant. No, um, I say hobo, I mean Mary Poppins. Right, um, <laughs> I completely lost my place, so I'm just going to finish with the joke. Why start now? But I know. Um, this joke is about swear language, because I figure we've talked about that, it makes sense. This joke is about two kids, who for the sake of an easy life we shall call Bert and Ernie. <laughs> and uh, Bert is the slightly older brother, they're about seven years old. Ernie, slightly younger, only five. Bert comes into Ernie's room one day and says, I think it's time that we started swearing. 
I think it's the only way mum and dad are going to take us seriously. I think it's the only way they'll think of us as adults. So we'll go downstairs and we will start swearing and that will prove to them that we're grown-ups. And Ernie says, all right, how are we going to do that? Bert says, just, just follow my lead. It'll be good. Follow my lead. So they go downstairs for breakfast and the dad's already in the kitchen. He goes, so what do you two want? And Bert goes, well, shit, dad, I guess I'll have grilled cheese. And he doesn't know exactly what happens next, but the next thing he knows is Dad's on his feet, um, Bert's run upstairs screaming, clutching the back of his legs, crying his eyes out. And he looks at his dad, looks at the space that Bert was five seconds ago. His dad's fuming, he goes, what about you? What do you want? And he looks at his dad, looks up the stairs where he can hear Bert sobbing his eyes out. Looks at his dad again, he goes, I don't know, but it won't be fucking grilled cheese! <laughs> Thank you!